Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today we're headed out on the water together to do some early season power fishing. Come along, it should be fun. It is early season, no way around it. You could call it late winter, you could call it super early spring, but fish are starting to move up shallow. Our water temps today should be like 49 to 52 degrees, if I was going to guess. I haven't actually started fishing yet, but that's where it's been hovering. It's that right on that line where fish will push shallow and begin to feed. So we're going power fishing. We've got murky water. So on this side, I've got my more subtle baits, a white Jackal TN70, a blade bait, and an A-Rig, a tactical mini flex. Over here, we've got a bold TN70, got an ATV square bill, and a couple of chatter baits, a couple of jackhammers. One really bright and bold, one a little more subtle. Hopefully these fish feed today. I really like our conditions. We've got a little bit of rain blowing through, but it should clear off afterwards. Let's get to it. He smashed it. Was fishing it stop and go, a lot of jerking, a lot of popping, not just a straight retrieve. And he crushed that jackhammer. Fishing that with the missile spunk shad on the back. He blasted it. Look how washed out his color is from being in that muddy water. Water temp is actually a lot warmer than I expected. I think we've had some warmer nights. We've had a bunch of rain. Water's like mid fifties. It should be go time. Smaller fish, I think. But that's a very good sign. Very cool. We'll take him. So I started out in the back of a cove. That first bite was way, way back in a cove. Um, I thought with the warmer water temps, muddy water, fish will be pushing. But you have to remember, in the spring, they don't all come in just one solid wave, right? So I got one other bite, missed it, and thought, you know, I'm gonna head out and fish the first secondary points coming off of, well, we're on the Tennessee River, we're on Chickamauga, I'm finally back home. So coming off of the river, but basically coming off the main lake, going into a cove, that first shallow point, that was literally my first cast. So there are definitely waves of fish pouring up into the shallows right now. That's really exciting. Well, it's not what I was planning to catch on a lipless, but I'm obviously using good leader material. <laughs> switched from the red, which is what I had him going good on the other day, to a white. This is literally the first cast. That is really interesting information. Maybe random, 
Probably not. It's funny how they turn on and off of colors. That's why I've got a natural jackhammer and a fire craw jackhammer. It's why I've got a white lipless and an orange lipless. Just checking. Because one day they want one, one day they want the other. And with the way this storm is blowing through and the sun's coming out, it might change throughout the day. Now that last lipless fish bit on the straight retrieve and that got me thinking need to mix it up so that's that atv finally one on a bright color and our best fish frankly that's one thing that i think a lot of people fail to understand like the red bait thing in the spring it's a thing so is chartreuse bold colors get big bites now fish aren't always willing to eat them that's the thing you get a lot more bites on ghost white right natural tones but when the fish are willing i'm amazed how many spring days i mean red works year round but there's something about it specifically in the spring. And I'm amazed how many days, maybe I didn't catch a bunch on it, but my biggest fish of the day came on a red bait. And now this one's bright and bold, right? That's because of my watercolor. If my water gets cleaner, I go to those really ghosty blood craw type colors. Maybe I'll link a couple of those in the video description just to help you. Tim recently did a video on it. Maybe I'll link that too. Uh, but there's something about those bold colors getting less but bigger bites. Golly, he hit that hard. I'm using that stop and go retrieve. I don't know if you guys can see that or not as I'm doing it, but I mean, he just smashed that thing. That was a cool bite, just freight trained it. I was hoping he was bigger than this. I mean, he hit hard. Awesome. Another one, same cast, same lineup, same bait. I'm gonna keep casting because I think they're fired up, but as soon as this ends, I'll explain why that's important. Got him. Man, that's fun. That bait is completely stock. That's the stock hook. Throwing that on a Mega Bass flat side special. It's a really good rod for this. <laughs> over and over and over. I think that makes five now. Here's the deal. When this video started, I showed you the baits I had tied on. Oh, I missed him. All reaction baits, all power fishing, 
half natural, half bold. We started out in the back of a cove, got one, but again, it was one. This is the time of year that you wanna be moving and looking for schools of fish. So we abandoned that. I started jumping secondary points, caught one right away, jumped a couple more points, caught another, and then we flatlined for a while. When that happens, you know, you start spinning in your, in your mind. I've caught three fish, but each one was a loner. So obviously those are those first fish reaching up. Somewhere behind them is a mass of fish. It's just the way it works. So I started backing out secondary points, working closer to the mouth of a major cove. Get a bite, catch him, cast again. Another bite, cast again, another bite, cast again, another one. That's what you're looking for. It's not that I couldn't come out here with a shaky head and a Sanko and a jig and blast them. I think I can. But what I'll never do, or what's unlikely to happen, is that in a single day, I would cover enough water to run into an aggressive school of fish. When I stick with these power fishing techniques, I can cover so much water so quickly that there's pretty good odds I'm going to run into them. Now, these all look like, there's one, all look like bucks to me, males. First one's coming in. See the size? It's a male. Which means, now I'm not sure I'm gonna have enough time today. Hopefully I will. But it means if we keep backing out, working our way down these secondaries, headed to main lake water, headed to the big water. A few points back from a school of males is usually where you're gonna find, oh, missed them again, a handful of those bigger females. That's ultimately what we're looking for, right? We're looking for a big fish. So, oh, he ate it right there. He came out of the water and ate that. Did I mention there's a school of fish right here? This is awesome. I love this time of year. I would like to stumble onto a giant. It can happen at any time, but I feel like I'm sitting in four and a half feet of water right here. Our fish today have come from about two feet of water to six feet of water. I feel like my really big ones are still just a little further out, a few more points along. We'll see if we run into one, but that's what I think the deal is. <laughs> Same caliber of fish, all traveling together, all ultimately headed towards good spawning grounds. I've moved down, oh, I don't know, two or three more points. Definitely still a male. That one on the fire craw jackhammer it doesn't get much brighter and bolder than that. I may run out of time soon. I've got somewhere I've got to be this afternoon. I'm going to keep hopping these points and hopefully we run into a good one before I run out of time. There we go.
Oh, he had it in the mouth, but he also had it on the side. So he felt a whole lot bigger. That one smashed it. Oh, he pulled off, got him again. <laughs> that may have been more than one. Oh my goodness, he swallowed it. My goodness. For the second time today, we are flat out on a school of fish with that Bill Lewis 1.5 ATV. They are crushing that thing. I'm using a very fast retrieve, seven to one reel, very fast retrieve, stop and go. And almost all of them are blasting it when I pause. Once in a while, one will grab it on the steady run, but almost all of my pause it and boom, there they are. What a fun day. All right, I have run out of time, so this is going to be my last cast. We'll see if I get one. I got him. <laughs> no. No, oh, and it's a big one. It's the one we were after. We backed out seven or eight points from where we started. What did I tell you guys? Find the schools, back out farther, find the good ones. I backed out a bunch of points and there she is. That's the first big female of the day. She was with a second school of fish that was pushing back. That is amazing. You could write a textbook on bass fishing about what we found today in terms of starting in the back, seeing if fish had made the moves yet. There's one there, but it's still too early start working our way out find another one but still too early work our way out find a school pound on them but you know they're bucks they're males which means the females are behind they're farther out keep backtracking those secondary points get on those bold colors literally on the called last cast of the day get the fish we're looking for unreal i hope you guys enjoyed this i hope this helps you this spring with your mindset of how to target fish and how to locate bigger fish i'll link the baits the gear everything i was using today down in the video description if you enjoyed the video hit the like button subscribe to the channel and we'll talk to you soon